to God. In all the churches of glory to God that we have right now. And to all the children of God who are saved in this world by the blood of Jesus. As we continue tonight in the teaching in faith, this mini series we have done so far in the, the teaching about how do we walk before a holy God. And the second, tonight the second teaching about faith. And also we're gonna we're gonna talk about how do we represent him. So so far we've done four teachings so far. The first one we did was to walk humbly before God. From Micah six, chapter six verse eight. The next second teaching we did was walk decently before God. Romans thirteen verse thirteen. The third one was walk orderly before God, in order before God. From Acts of the Apostles chapter twenty one verse twenty four. And the number fourth teaching was walk worthy before a holy God. And tonight is the second teaching about faith. How do we walk in faith before a holy God? Because we are his children. So therefore, he wants his children to have the faith of him. Now, I know that if we read from, I'm going to read, I was going to do this in the end, but I'm going to do it now. If we read from uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 22, in English it says, Mark chapter 11, verse 22, it says, Have faith in God, Jesus answered. But if I take you to the ancient, original word of God, which we're reading in Greek, it says, Ke apokryphin o Jesus, legi pros aftus, echete pistin theou. Here says, in Greek, the ancient Greek, to have the faith of God. Not to have faith in God, to have the faith of God. Why does it say that? Because we are his children. So therefore God expects us to have the same faith that he has. Yes. He expects his children to have the same faith. Mm -hmm. So as we're gonna, tonight we're going to start a continuation of this faith, you'll see the importance and how we cannot allow ourselves to be away from faith and be contaminated with this world and these uh, smart teachings that they're sharing all over this world which is, you lose faith and instead of having faith. So the first scripture we're going to read, the second scripture we're going to read, is from Romans chapter 3, verse 28. It says, For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. So your justification, it doesn't come by the rules, the regulations. It's come, you are, we are justified by faith. As we believe in what the Word of God says, as we believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we are maintained, and we are justified by faith apart from any works of the law. Only faith. So let's also read Romans chapter 4, verse 9. In this blessedness, only from the second size, or also for the uncircumcised, we have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. See, they had this debate, do you need to be circumcised or uncircumcised, okay? But here the Bible tells us clearly, clearly God credited to Abraham as righteous. He, he said, you are righteous before me because that time Jesus' blood, blood was not shed yet. So God justified Abraham just because Abraham believed that he was God. 
and he listened to what God was telling him and he was doing exactly what God, what God ordered him to do. As we're going to continue on this teaching, you see what Abraham had to do. What, how God tested Abraham and Abraham did not fail to trust God. And this is important that we also, as God allows things to come our way, we don't fall away because our faith fails us. Let's also look at Romans 4, 18 to, 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 to 21. Against all hope, Abraham, in hope believed, and so became a father to many nations, just as he has been said to him, so should your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about 100 years old, and the Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not wave through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he said and promised. This is why it was created to him as righteousness. Now just imagine now, he was 100 years old and Sarah was barren. And because God told him, you will be the father of the nations, he showed him, look at the sand of the seashores, your offspring will be more than the sand of the seashores. He believed God, and he says, and he didn't waver, wave, you know, he didn't, he, he trusted God fully. He didn't like said, you know what, as a lot of us do. I'm 100 years old, my wife is buried. How can this be possible? Against all odds, he said, he was not weak in, in his faith. He says, no, God said it, so therefore it's done. I am who God says I am, and I will be who God promised me to be. Not reciting and thinking, did God really tell me to do this? Did really God say that I could have children? He was fully convinced and I, I want to tell all of you who listen to this message that all the promises God has made to all of us will come to pass. But it will come to pass in His time. So one thing we all need to learn is to have patience and wait and believe and trust in the Lord and lean not into our understanding. And in time, He will deliver us and He will bring all these promises to pass. It's important as a children of God to walk by faith. Let's also read, read Romans chapter 10, verse 17 to 17 to 19. Consequently, faith comes by hearing the message, and the message has been heard, the word about Christ. But I ask. Did they not hear? Of course they did. The voice has gone out into the all earth. They were to the ends of the world. Again I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation, and I will make you angry by the nation that has not understanding. Now you need to understand that Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Now, either you read the word of God or you hear the word of God, faith will produce by listening to the word of God. So you cannot say, oh, I'm too busy today and I cannot hear the word of God. You cannot say, oh, we'll read it tomorrow or, or the day after. We are the children of the living God and our manual for having a godly life and for us working fully in faith is the Bible and it's important that we read the word daily and get strong in our faith and get strong in the word and we always, our mouth recites the word of God. 
not unbelief. We do not, it's better for us to bite our tongues than open our mouth as something that is not in belief. So it's important that we learn because many, the, the enemy can use any person, um, believers and unbelievers, to bring you unbelief into your life. But as the person says something to you, if you know the word, the scripture will rise up out of your heart automatically. The Holy Spirit will bring the remembrance, the scripture that is inside your heart. And yet, then you release that scripture and says, no, this is what it is. This is what's going to happen. And now that is faith. Now, you know, when, when I, me and my wife, we went to Albania in 2013, the Lord clearly spoke to my wife and he said that he will use the Albanians to make the Greeks jealous because the Greeks, they had the same problem the Israelis had. You know, on the beginning, God took the apostles to Europe and in, in, in Greece because the Jewish people, they were not willing to believe about the new covenant. And God says here, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation, and I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. So, the, all the unbelievers at the time, they had no understanding. And the Jews who had the covenant of God, God said, I'm going to go somewhere else, because you don't believe what I'm telling you. So please understand the importance that we <laughs> have to walk by faith, okay, before a holy father and holy God. Now also let's read uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 23. But whoever has that is condemned, and if they eat because the eating is not from faith, and anything that does not come from faith, it's sin. Here the same they were talking about, you know, and I don't want to go out there on that, to, you know, about what they're waiting and, you know, what food they're waiting and that, and what was right and what was wrong. But here, what, what I want you to really, that it says here is to important to understand is that that they were talking about what to eat and what to eat is not from faith. And it says, everything that does not come from faith, it's sin. You, you need to understand that, you know, when you don't walk in faith, you're actually sinning. Right. When we know walking in faith, when we walk in unbelief, we're actually sinning before a holy God. Right. And do we all do that? A lot of people, we do, you know, most of us do that. And it's important that we stop it and start walking in faith because I know none of us want to, to be in sin before a holy God. So it's important that we all learn to walk in faith. Yeah. Let's now also look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gift of healing by the same Spirit. Now, here, it, it, this is one of the nine gifts in the Spirit. It's the gift of faith. God, on His mercy and His love for His people, Jesus, for the love towards His body, He has given us the gift of faith and says, Okay, you have so much unbelief. Here, I'm going to bless you and put a person in the church they have the gift of faith so the body can function perfectly. But it, above that, the gift of faith from God, it's important that we do everything in, in our power in, in a possibility to make sure that we try. We do everything we can to try to walk by faith. How do you do that? Do you do that? It's by constantly meditating in the Word of God and constantly reciting the Word of God daily every hour of the day and for us everything that open our mouth says is from the word and is in faith amen yes, 
Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. For we live by faith, not by sight. Now, I know many Christians that live by sight. But here the Bible directs us and tells us, ordering us, He commands us. Because every word in this Bible is it's a commandment from Jesus for us. He commands us to live by faith, not by sight. Do not, leave, do not see you to what's happening around your life to the problem that we face in our own lives every day. Do not live by that because that is not faith. That is to what's actually taking place in your life, you know, but that's not faith. That is not what actually what God says about your life. That is a circumstance that can change in any moment. And what we need to do is stand by faith. We stand by faith at His time, He's going to turn it around. So in other words, when you see something going wrong in your life, do not believe that this is actually what's going to take place. No, no, no. Just, no, no, no. Yeah, that, that, you know, and again, please do not be goofy as a Christian and say, oh, well, you know what, uh, uh, that's not happening. No, no, if this is happening, this is, what, well, this is what I see, but that's not it. That's not it. This is what, what is going to take place. This is what, what I see right now, but that's not it. This is what's going to take place. So in other words, we speak faith in the, in the circumstances. It says, no, 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 no. I reject that, I do not accept it, and this is what's going to take place. And you speak blessing over the whole situation. And allow the Holy Spirit and allow God to do His job at the time that He has chosen to bring change in the whole situation in our lives. We live by faith, not by sight. So therefore, we don't believe anything else that is contrary to the Word of God. Because we are a children of the living God. And we are, by faith, God the Father created the whole world in six days. He did everything in six days. And on the seventh day, He rested. By faith. He also required faith Himself to do what He did for the, for the whole world. To create everything that He did in six days. So we also can have, we have the inheritance of that faith. Because we are in Christ. So, do not allow circumstance or unbelief to come in your life and believe that what's taking place is actually what's going to happen. No. It's not true. The truth is what the Word of God says about you. That is the truth. Let's also look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves to see whatever you are in faith. Test yourselves. Do not, don't you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you have failed the test. Wow. So it's here the Bible teaching us to examine ourselves either we are not, we are walking in faith or not. So I say to every one of you who listen to this message, examine yourself daily. Are you walking in faith? And if you're not, bring yourself in faith. It's up to you to say, you know, that's what I'm saying is not faith. And bring yourself exactly what you need to be and walk in faith. Test yourselves. And says, don't you realize that you're in Christ Jesus? Don't you be? Don't you realize that we are children of the living God? Don't you realize that you're part of the body of Christ? Unless, of course, you have the test. Unless, you, unless, uh, unless, of course, you yourself, wrong, you don't believe, you're not born again, and you have followed the test. But we are who are born again Christians, we're born in the Spirit of God, you cannot follow the test. Only you can be deceived, and only you can also you can walk in unbelief. So therefore, you do not allow. Test yourself and make sure you don't allow yourself to walk in unbelief, or to believe the lies of the enemy tells you, or people telling you. And when somebody says a lie to you, he says, I'm sorry, sir, madam, 
That's the truth. It's the truth. And it's important that we all know the Word of God. So as you know the Word of God, as you have read the Word of God, and the Word of God is inside your spirit, then the Holy Spirit brings the Word up in remembrance to you, and you say, boom, the Word of God. Da -da -da. Tell you, no, this is what it is. Let's uh, read Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. This is my favorite scripture. This is what the Apostle Paul said about himself. Galatians 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I never live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is my favorite scripture. We have, we have been crucified with Christ. When he was on the cross, your city was crucified with him up on the cross. And was not on the cross the same day with him. So we have been crucified and no longer I who live, he says. The soul is no longer the old person, the old person, the old flesh. It's sarka, who says in Greek. It should be under your feet. And it's your responsibility as a Christian to make sure that flesh is under your feet. And you walk by faith. And he says, I, it's not I who longer live, but Christ who lives in me. The life that I never live in this body. I live by faith. So we have to live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. You gotta say that. Who loved me and gave himself up for me. You gotta take this personal for yourself. He gave himself up for me because if, the, if you were the only person on this earth, he would have come and died. This is only for you. Jesus saw the humanity and he said to his Father, if you can take this cup of wine, please do. But again, again, it's not my will. Let your will be done. In other words, Jesus had, he was sinless. He had the opportunity and he could say at the time, sorry, dead. I'm not going to do this. But because he saw us, he saw humanity, he saw me and said, this man is going to go to hell. I love him too much. I can't let him go to hell. I want to help him. And it's just the life that I now live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This scripture says it all. Okay? Galatians chapter 3 verse 9. Galatians chapter 3 verse 9. So those who are early on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So those who rely on faith are blessed. So if we rely on our faith and what the Bible says about us, we are blessed as Abraham, our father of faith, was blessed. Galatians 3, verse 26. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. Pay attention to what it says here. So in Christ Jesus, we are all children of God through faith. If you don't have faith, you're not a child of God because you don't believe. Through faith, we are children of God. So how important is faith for us? It's everything in our walk. To walk by faith, not by sight. Galatians, sorry, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 12. In him and through faith in him 
we may approach God with freedom and confidence in Him and through faith in Him we may approach God with freedom and confidence I can tell you now when I was when I first got saved I was a young Christian God showed me the blue door and He was inviting me to go in to the holies of holies and I didn't have the faith to go in I didn't know that God he was going to accept me or not and I didn't have faith to actually walk into the holies of holies in a time on it because the Bible says in, in Hebrew 4 verse 16 it says to, to go in to the holies of holies in time on it to, to have grace and to receive favor in the time of your need but that time myself I didn't have the faith to walk into the holies of holies to receive what God had for me so he says, he says here in him and through faith so we are in him but it's also we need to have faith in him who might approach so if you don't have faith you cannot approach God as I, as, as I couldn't approach God in going to the holies of holies because I was scared if you don't have faith that Jesus has completely washed you clean by his blood and the father wants you to go in in a time of your need to ask him whatever you want as his, as, as his child you're not going to go into the holies of holies because no faith and because of unbelief in your heart. So understand the importance to what I'm teaching you here right now, okay? Let's also look at the Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. In addition to all this, take up the seal of faith which in which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows from the evil one. <laughs> Did you know also once, again I had no faith, I was very young in the Lord and there was a big problem in my life at the time. I actually saw the enemy's arrows coming in my heart. I saw him because I didn't have the faith to put the seal of fire before me to protect myself from the, from the arrows that coming against me. He says here, in addition to all this, take up the seal of faith in which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows. I saw the flaming arrows coming towards my heart of the evil one. So the evil one will send you arrows. But if you have the faith, you block him with your faith. With the seal of faith, you block him. And those arrows hit the seal of faith and it cannot touch, it cannot penetrate at all. It cannot harm you at all. The enemy has no hold on our lives at all if we have faith. I saw it in the spirit. Clearly. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Rooted, let your roots in the word go deep in your spirit. Let the root, in, just big, big roots, strong roots. See, you see some trees on the street. If it's a small tree, a car can hit it and knock it down. If it's a big tree and have big roots on the ground, the, the car will hit it and will bounce off. And the people inside the car will die because they hit this tree. Let, be, let our faith be so much rooted in the Word of God that nothing can stop us from this world. No attack from no enemy, no from people, no from nothing can hold us back from what God has for us. So let the roots of your life go deep, deep in the word, big, big in the belief and understand who you are in Christ and what God has entrusted you to do on this earth. Rooted and build up. So you see, when when we're rooted and build up, strengthen in by faith. So the strengthening comes by faith. So rooted in the word, 
build up and strengthened by faith. How do we get strengthened by faith? By reading the word of God. By, because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God as it says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Let's also look at the Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4. Chapter 1, verse 4. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecution and trials you are enduring. Here, the Apostle Paul was talking about the, the church in Thessalonica, who at the time, he says, he says, he was boasting about the perseverance. He was telling the other churches, look, you got to see the church in Thessalonica. You got to see how much faith this church has. Because through perseverance and persecution, they, were, they had perseverance and faith through the persecution and trials they were enduring. You know, our sister Georgina talked about today how to what is going to happen ahead of times here in Australia. To how all this unbelief is take, it's taking place, and how the prosecution is going to start happening now all over the world because of the faith that we believe. So it's important because as we have faith, like the first Christians on the on the on the, on the Bible, the Roman authorities they were crucified them on the sticks and they were making them torches, they were burning them. And others, they were taking them inside the arena and they were fitting the lines for them. And they, those people, they had so much faith. And in the middle of those persecutions, they were praising and glorifying God. Nothing could stop them. If we have faith, nothing, nothing but nothing can stop you or hold you back. Or no problem, no persecution, nothing can hold you back from what God has for you and for me in our lives. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. So, 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 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. The Spirit clearly says that the light, in the latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. This is happening right now on this world right now. People following deceiving spirits have abandoned the, the faith and get going and believing to what the devil teaching them to believe. If something is not written in the Word of God, if something is not written in the Bible, reject it. Do not believe it. If I tell you something and it's not written in the Bible, you reject it. All these deceiving spirits and all these new ideas and these new teachings. The Bible says in the latter days, the people will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. So these teachings are taught by demons. And they think they are taught by the Holy Spirit and Jesus, but actually all these teachings are taught by demons. Why? Because what the teaching is not written in the Word of God. So we make sure that everything we read, or anything anybody teaches you, anything you hear, it's got to be written. And there has to have two witnesses in the Bible. The Bible has to have two or three witnesses in the Bible. If there's not two witnesses, do not, do not accept it. Let's also look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, 11 and 12. But you, men of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight a good fight. The good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life, to which we are called when you have made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. What fight do you have to fight? The fight of faith. You don't have to fight those demons because they've been defeated by Jesus. And the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15, they've been defeated and Jesus made a spectacle out of them. So we, people keep it too busy fighting the demons. No, no, no. The only thing you're going to fight is faith. You have to believe. That's all you have to do. 
Jesus done everything, has completed everything for you and me. So as we believe and walk by faith and not by sight, and the only fight you have to fight is the fight of faith. So how important it is to what you are allowed to come into your spirit. How important it is to hear what you're hearing. So it's important that you block your ears and close your eyes to not see or hear things you're not supposed to. Because that's going to influence you and that's going to weaken your, your, your faith. And that's, gonna, and that's when then you're going to have trouble. I'm going to say it again one more time. The only fight you have to fight is the fight of faith. Nothing else. Everything has been done by Jesus. Let's now, now let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. This is what the Apostle Paul said about himself. And I pray that this is going to be for every brother and sister of glory to God in this world. Chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have kept the fight. The fight. Now that is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on the day. And not only to me, but to also to all who have longed for his appearing. Paul said about himself, I have, have finished and I have fought the fight of faith. And he has kept the fight, he said. So it's important that we all also keep our faith, kept the faith like he did. And the Lord Jesus will then wait for us as we finish our race to give us the crown of righteousness as we go to him. And because he says, because he says, not only to me, he says, but also to all who long for his appearance. So as we keep our faith, we all gonna be given a crown of righteousness by Jesus. Now let's go to Hebrew chapter 10, verse 38 and 39. <laughs> and by my but, he says, but, here's a but here. My righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have, been, have faith and have been saved. So we are righteous before, because of what Jesus did, okay? And it says, my righteous one will live by faith. Not one day live by faith and the next day live with unbelief. We live day and night by faith. And he says, I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. So we cannot shrink back because Jesus doesn't like us when we shrink back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed. So if you shrink back, you've been destroyed by the enemy. Okay? But to those who have faith and are saved. So as we are saved, as we have faith, we also walk and we are saved. And the Lord Jesus, he said again, he, he's not, he, has, he has not taken no pleasure for those who shrink back. He, he's not, he doesn't like that because he has paid for our salvation by his blood. So the least thing we can do is that this have faith and believe to what he's done for us. Then also let's read. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Without faith, 
it is impossible to please God. How important faith is? The most important thing in your walk with God. Because without faith, he is here, it is impossible to please him. Why? Because he wants to reward you, he wants to bless you, he wants to do so many things. But if you don't believe that he even exists, or he is going to do those things for you, maybe you believe he exists, but you don't believe that he actually going to do anything for you. You don't believe that he actually he loves you. You don't believe actually he's going to actually do those things for you that he says in the, in the Word of God. It is impossible to please God without faith. If you're going to take something with you tonight, take the scripture with you. That God, you cannot please God if you have no faith. It's impossible. So she said it's impossible. It's, it cannot be done if you have no faith. Let's also look at Hebrews 11 verse 13. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and worked on them from distance, admitting that they were foreigners as strangers on earth. The Old Testament people, they were so, was the prophet so, those things are going to happen with the new covenant that God's going to do for the people like us, born again Christians, and the blessings that God's going to give. And they looked at it from far away, and they loved it, and, but they could not have any of that. But by faith, they looked at it, they believed it, and they were happy to what was going to happen to us in the years, in, in hundreds of thousands of years. Oh, no, hundreds. It was actually a thousand years later. Thousands of years later. So we don't, you know, from the Old Testament, the New Testament was, was, was a lot, a lot, a lot of time. It was like 4,000 years in the Old Testament. And we only 2,000 years in the New Testament. So there was a long time. And these people saw it. Okay, from distance, and they said because and also they, they see themselves they were like foreigners and strangers on earth, and sometimes we all the same. The people look at us and said, "Wait, this person is crazy. Look at him. He believes in Jesus, you know." And we also feel like that at times because people they don't believe to what you believe, but that's okay. We believe. We don't have to, you know. You don't have to. Have fellowship with unbelievers. They're gonna, you know, they're not gonna, they're, they're not gonna accept your faith. You have fellowship with people who believe. So let's also look at uh, Hebrew chapter eleven, verse seventeen. By faith, Abraham was when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promise was about to sacrifice his one and only son. So Abraham says, yes God, I believe you. Yes God, no problem. You said you're going to bring my son. I waited for you. I got my son. Now God says, okay, you really believe me or me, Abraham? You really have fight towards me? Okay, now take your son and go to the man of Moriah which was three days journey up in the mountain and sacrificed my son. In other words, God gave him all the time for him to change his mind. Three days to go up to the mountain. And you know, years ago the Lord showed me, he said to me, on the mountain that I tested Abraham to sacrifice his son, he said, I sacrificed my own son, God told me. He said, on the same mountain, he said, Bogotha, which is the man of Moriah, he said, on the same mountain that I told, I told Abraham to go and sacrifice his son, I sacrificed my own son for humanity. I said, God. I was like, wow. He was like, yeah. So, but Abraham, he wasn't like, he was not made the father of faith because once he said, yes, I believe in you, God. God tested him afterwards after he had the son. Is he still going to believe? And Abraham, he was in his heart convinced. And you know what? He didn't even go to consult with his wife. He says, you know what, darling? God told me to go and sacrifice the son. <laughs> he took his son, he took the servants, he took the donkey, and he went. And one, one of his sons said, Father, I see the wood, but what is 
the animal to sacrifice the animal. He says, and Abraham said to his son, God will provide. That was the word of Abraham. God will provide. And God did provide the ram and the picket, sent the angels there with the ram, and Abraham sacrificed the animal instead of sacrificing his son. But he was tested. Okay. And you and I are going to be tested a lot of times as well. And it's important that we stand by faith, not by sight. So let's also look at uh, Hebrews 11 verse 30. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. The Lord did the same thing to me years ago when I was again a young Christian. I was in a, in a church meeting in the morning Friday morning meeting, and he told me to walk around Jericho seven times. And I said, Lord, people are going to think here that I'm stupid and like walking around the church seven times. And I said to him, anyway, and who's going to sound the trumpet here? Said, Nobody has a trumpet here. I said, but anyway, and I said, Lord, there's no more will be done that your will be done. You send me for me to do, I'm going to do what you told me to do. And I did what I did, and the next minute I hear, he brought a person from was no part of the church, and that day or not church, for him to blow the trumpet at the right time as I did the seventh round. So we're gonna learn from those things that God's showing us and walk by faith. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So if all we keep our eyes in Jesus, He is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. So our eyes should be strictly, fully on Jesus and wait in Him for Him until He perfect our faith. James chapter 1 verse 3. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. As you are tested in faith by God, that will produce perseverance. So if you're going through a problem at the moment, stay strong in the Lord because testing of your faith will produce perseverance in your life. You will be able to handle it much better and much stronger in the years to come. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's also look at uh, James chapter 2 verse 14 to 17. What good is my brother and sisters? The someone claims to have faith but has no deeds. <laughs> Can faith saves them. Suppose a brother or sister with their, comes a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace and be warm and be fed but does nothing about the physical needs, what does it do it? It is in the same way faith by itself it is not a company, a company, if it's not a company, it company, a combinet, a combinet by faith, by action, a company, a company, I can't say, can you say Frank? A company, cabinet by actions is dead. Okay, so faith without deeds is, is worthless, okay? And because somebody comes to you and he's starving and he has no food and says, have a nice day, God bless you, be well fed and, and everything's okay for you, no problem. He says, faith without action is also dead. So keep that in mind as well, okay? Let's also look at uh, James 2 verse 26. As the body is without 
without the spirit is dead, so faith without deed is dead. Before we were born again, we were our spirit was dead, was cut off from God, and we were to die, we were going to hell for eternity. As our spirit became alive, and we're alive in Christ, but also faith without deeds is also dead. In other words, you have no faith if you have no deeds. Let's also look at uh, James 5 verse 15. And the prayer was offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So even when we pray for somebody, as this prayer we, we offer is in faith, the Lord will make them well. There's many, there's so many scriptures which is, we read on the first session that we did about faith, how the Lord Jesus says, your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. Your faith, your faith, your faith. It was always your faith. He didn't say, I'm J Jesus Christ, I'm a superstar, and I touch you and you heal. He says, your faith has made you well. So how important is for us to have faith? <coughs> Let's look at also 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. Be alert and sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, stand firm in faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world undergoing the same kind of suffering. See, the enemy comes to you as a roaring lion, but he's not the lion. He's come as a roaring lion. Jesus Christ is the roaring lion, okay? But he comes as a lion. He says, resist him and stand firm in your faith. And all the other believers all over the world, he says, going through the same testing and suffering. So it's important that when the attack comes, you stand firm and says, in Jesus' name, go away. You're not the lion. You're not the roaring lion. Jesus Christ is the running line. Go away in Jesus' name. <coughs> when we finish, please. So let's read uh, Jude 20. But you, dear friends, by building yourself up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, dear friends, just build yourselves up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. So, all of us, it's important that we pray in tongues continuously. And if you're not, if you haven't got the gift of praying in tongues, ask the Lord to gift you with a, with a gift to, to pray in tongues and pray in, 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 in the Spirit all the time because it's important that we build ourselves up in the most holy faith. Build ourselves up. He doesn't say He's going to build you up. He says, Build yourselves up. We have to build ourselves up. This is our responsibility to build ourselves up. Let's look at Revelation chapter 2 verse 13. I know where you live. Where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me. And even in the days of Adipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. This talks about, in an area, he was talking about the church of Pergamum, which is today, in today's Turkey, or Turkey is today. And he said that you try, you stay true to the name. He says, these people that were living, in the area where Satan has his throne at the ground, okay? And he says, you did not renounce your faith. Those people stayed strong in faith. Even to the point when one of the servants of God was put to death by the sword, 
they still remain in faith. And I want to encourage you that we all continue to stay in faith. And the last scripture for tonight is Revelation 14, verse 12. This calls for patience and endurance on the part of the people of God who keep its commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. I have spoke to you the last two teachings, the la these two teachings, the one last week and this week, the importance of us walking in faith. And he says here, he calls for patience and endurance. It's important that we have patience and, and, and do everything comes against us and keep the commandments of God. It's not an idea of God, it's a commandment of God. He commands us to do things to protect us from ourselves and to remain faithful in Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you and help you to take your position in the army of glory to God. We have called to take the whole world in Jesus and I want to train every one of you in glory to God to be a soldier in Christ and to take your position to what God has called you to do on this earth. And faith is very important for your families, for your children, for your life, for your wives, for your husbands, for your whole life. Faith. With faith without faith, it's impossible to please God. Let's all buy our, all buy our heads in pride. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you that you this message that I've given, Lord, to the people of the world, Lord, and mostly the people of glory to God all over the earth, Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you, these this scriptures that I read to them, Lord, remind them and illuminate them in the Spirit, Lord, and I pray that the people, Lord, understand the importance of walking by faith, Lord, and do not believe the lies, Lord, taught to them by other ministries, Lord, or by Satan himself, Lord, and I pray that every believer, Lord, will understand and come to full understanding and realization who they are in you, Lord Jesus. I ask for your blessing, Lord, for all the people of glory to God and all the children of God all over the earth, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, that you continuously, Holy Spirit, help them, Lord, to take the position they have in you, Lord. I give you all the glory, Lord, and all the honor and all the praise, Lord. And in your holy name, Lord, we pray. And we all together, we say, Amen. Amen.